Welcome back to Open Line. It's really been a good hour talking with the folks from Gideon's Army who are doing the work here in Nashville to address youth violence and doing it in some amazing ways. We've talked about some of the programs that you guys are in the schools with, some after school programs. Let's talk about this grief retreat. Yes. What is that? So that's a that's a tr that's a camp that we collaborate with live hospice. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is we take children that have or high school students rather that have experienced a loss that's associated with some type of gun violence. We take them out to the uh, camping, mm -hmm. you know, which is a really a stretch for some of them. Oh, like yeah, these, I bet. these city kids, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, we take them out camping and then we give them healthy coping skills, yeah. right? Because what our young people also need to learn is just how to navigate their triggers. Mm -hmm. especially when it comes to gun violence. And so through that, we're able to learn who they are, but they're also able to be empowered. You know, they they learn about themselves and they really get stretched through, through the experience. Then there's also a summer camp. There's also yes. a summer camp. And yes. so the summer camps kind of look like our youth groups as well, where we try to teach them how to conflict management skills, mm -hmm. social emotional learning skills, all through our credible messengers and just keeping them active over the summer because mm -hmm. our children need something to do. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's sure. a big component of this. It's just not having anything near you to do or, mm -hmm. or an opportunity to get to somewhere to do something. For sure. Yeah. Um, I, we talked about Deidre Nicole's story. Mm -hmm. How did you guys get involved in this? Why are you so passionate about it? So, I, and, I, and I give a brief, I give a brief because I, I know my family is watching uh, and I don't want to <laughs> embarrass nobody. I feel like I already have. But I'm, I, so I am from, my whole entire family is from Nashville and we've, we've been really close to here since 1794 before Tennessee becomes a state in 1796 so I feel like I'm ancestrally attached to this mm -hmm. land so when I talk about the North Nashville very specifically where I'm from Clay Street um, it's just a lot of passion there because I feel like this land is my responsibility because I've been here my family has built this land my family has bled on this land and we have worshiped here mm -hmm. Well, with me, my my story, so I, from, I'm from East Nashville. I was born in North Nashville and then moved into East Nashville. And I, uh, I grew up in gangs. I uh, was a convicted drug dealer. I was just, you know I mean, all in the streets my whole life until the age of 27. Wow. Even while I was doing a lot of good things for the community, because I've always cared. Even when I was in the streets, everything that I did was came from poverty. Mm -hmm. So the only reason I was a drug dealer is because there was no other means for me to survive. Uh, I had a child at the age of 15, which actually graduated. He graduated from Brentwood Academy. He's going to TSU now to be a dentist. Uh, awesome. So I raised him from age 15 until now. But uh, I just had a lot of responsibility and uh, a lot of things on my plate with not a lot of resources, mm -hmm. which led me down a certain path. So when everything came back full circle, I knew that I was that child that just needed just a little bit. I remember I used to be like, if I just had a hundred dollars to sign up for this basketball thing, mm -hmm. I wanted to play basketball. Mm -hmm. I had one of the highest GPAs in the state of Tennessee going into high school. I just wanted to do school, but the resources, I used to have to ride the city bus to go to school. So it's like a lot of things that I didn't have yeah. led me to be the person that I am. But now I know that if I could give one person that little lifeline or that anchor to mm -hmm. keep them grounded, that I know that they can uh, grow and be a better individual in the circumstances and environment they're in. What was the flip, the switch that flipped in you after being convicted of drug dealing? You said, I I'm not going to stay on this path. Well, to be honest with you, uh, keeping it all the way 100, yep. my last case cost me so much money. It was like $50,000 <laughs> for a, one case. Wow. So it cost me so much money to try to fight a case <laughs> that I was like, you know what? I think uh, this, this is time. Ain't, this don't make sense. Because I done cost <laughs> all this case, money. Right? I done made all this money just to give it back, just to be free. And I didn't right. mind paying for my freedom. freedom. And once I bought my freedom, I never wanted to acquire that debt again. That is the truth. And that story <laughs> resonates with our young people. Yeah. Yeah. That right. story resonate with our young folks, you know? And all of our credible messages have that story. You yes. know, that type of, I did something crazy, I came out on the better end, we laugh about it now, but look, bro, I don't want you doing that. Man. You know what I'm saying? Right. You might not be as lucky as me. Right, yeah, right, 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 right. I was really, I can honestly say that the universe just knew that I had a bigger, bigger mission yeah. and I had to be there to accomplish it. Mm -hmm. But So if we throw our lives away, you may not finish the mission. Okay, I'm going to take a commercial break. When we come back, we have some shout outs to get for people who are supporting Gideon's Army yes. and a call for more support. Stay where you are. Yes, sir. Yes.